<clears throat> well, I try to get too fancy on the slide by having the two examples, and I realize the two examples cause confusion. Yeah. I've done that before, but usually it's like showing a core overview tab. It's like hundreds of numbers on a single slide. Hello, everyone. Welcome again to another episode of SEO Fight Club. I am just popping out the YouTube chat right now. And setting it to live so I see all the messages, not just the top ones. Um, be sure to ask questions. We're happy to answer uh, any and all of your SEO questions uh, as long as time permits. And uh, today uh, we were going to uh, do some field observations. Uh, but before that, a uh, couple things to mention. Uh, Magic PR, uh, sponsor of SEO Fight Club. Madge, what's new in the press release world? Um, not a lot this week. <laughs> it's a lot of orders are, are through, uh, being processed. Um, apart from that, not not uh, not a lot of stuff that's new to be honest with you. Still working on a few things here and there. Uh, but the new service is up and running. Well, I think you're gonna like today's episode of, uh, of fight club because based on what lee has shown me yesterday mm -hmm. i suspect press releases will be a lot more potent in the very near future and so we're gonna talk about that today and uh, that's one of the implications of a change that we're seeing google make and uh, it's it's really fascinating, and it definitely hits your wheelhouse. Now, some of some of what you're doing also hits like social media, right? Like YouTube and uh, other so, social platforms. Social what... platform. The podcast hits around twenty platforms right now. So, um, which platforms do you connect with mostly? Um. So for the podcast, you got your Amazon, you got your Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, and so forth. Uh, for video, you got your YouTube, your Vimeo, uh, Facebook, Twitter. So with my Google News Network, Ted, the minute a PR goes live, a lot of our networks have social media properties already linked to them. So it automatically gets post on there. So the whole idea is, the press release gets syndicated on the major publications, but where else can it be syndicated to, right? So the advantage of doing a podcast is to get more views, more engagement on there. The same thing with the video, getting more engagement, more views, and same with social media. The more, the more eyeballs you have on a PR, the better. Well, I, I suspect you're probably going to be positively giddy about today. Yeah. So, I'm going to so. tell you, go get some champagne now, man. Enjoy the show. <laughs> <laughs> well, mind you do. <laughs> All right. Um, not the same, so, not the same, but to each his own. <laughs> well, we'll bring you back into the fold for your opinion on some of the things we, we share. So just uh, note okay. that today's episode is probably going to hit your industry <clears throat> a lot. Um, all right, so the next thing uh, we want to announce before we get started is Ooh. Lee Witcher has a new business. Lee, tell us about this. Well, we have a, a tool. It's been, uh, we've had it around for over a year in uh, beta and, and getting feedback and making enhancements to it. Um, but at the heart of it, the uh, the tool was stolen from an idea uh, of yours, Ted. No, you know, back when you were in e-commerce and you needed you know twenty five referring domains, you know really quickly to do it, uh, we couldn't architect it quite the way that you did uh, for all the different projects that we had. So we went a, a different direction. And so what the Simple Link tool does is it creates. Uh, links on cloud platforms that you control. It's basically your own little private PBN. You just give it a keyword, a URL, anchor text. It creates 
relevant pages for that particular URL pointing back to it. And that's it. It's done for speed. So I can do a CSV upload. If I just got a new plumbing uh, client, for example, they've got 40 pages on their website. 30 of them don't have links. I can put those in there, upload it, and it takes care of that. It builds the links for them. And then it gathers the URLs to those links and submits them to our indexer. So it gets them crawled for you. So it's basically you do it and you're done. Now, so, what what I've heard from people is that there's a bit of a setup burden to get started. But then once you're set up, it's really simple, like you've outlined here. Yeah, I mean, every time you've got to go into a cloud provider, you've got to go set up an account, set up your billing, set up you know all those uh, things. Uh, and then you also have to follow the steps that we've got in the training videos to give the appropriate permission so the tool can access and manage that stuff on your behalf. But once all that stuff's set up, you know, you just go into your, your dashboard and it literally is put a keyword, a URL, the anchor text you want, how many, and hit go. There's also the capability for enhancing it with some of your own code. If you know, if you want to do that, um, you know, people like uh, Terry uh, would be one who would want to, you know, I've got certain things that I like to do. So he might, you know, put his own little secret sauce in there. But yeah, now a lot of people fear, you know, the technical nature, like we said, cloud. <laughs> and so Ooh. like half the audience recoiled <laughs> the second you said <laughs> that word. So what about the SEOs who, you know, this type of thing is all new to them and they're a little confused about how it works? Can they like get like Lee Witcher's help in, in getting set up and we running? Have, we have support team uh, for that particular thing. It won't necessarily be me, but we also have, you know, step-by-step -step training videos on how to set up the site, how to utilize the tool. And we're getting ready to add some more based on the the tests that we've done. Some more strategies that you can uh, that you can utilize to to get these effect you know the the biggest impact out of them. Now I'll tell you because they are just a link you know on a cloud property doesn't mean it's going to shoot you up to number one. You know we know that, but it's very very good at getting you in the game. It's very very good at getting you from eighty to twenty five or nowhere to, you know, uh, 30. So you can push them up from there, but primarily it's designed for speed. And the nice thing about it is we don't have, it's everybody's own uh, PBN. So if I decide just to go crazy and Terry goes absolutely crazy and Charles goes absolutely crazy or something like that, it has no impact on you. You know, if we burn our own stuff to the ground, it's, it's contained in that regard. So... Now, when I use this strategy in ecom, uh, what what I noticed was I was often competing with Amazon product pages, and it took me about seven years to figure this out. But I always feared going head to head with Amazon because it's Amazon; they're page rank ten. What the hell can I do? Mm -hmm. um, but it turns out that those Amazon product pages have zero external backlinks pointed at them mm -hmm. so they have no backlinks and what i found is my product pages could beat amazon's product pages oftentimes with as little as 25 referring domains so right. when i made my system i set it up to give all of my products at the time they launch 25 referring domains it just automatically happened and so it sounds to me like this would be a great system for like online retailers that have a large catalog of products and they just want to raise the floor to get mm -hmm. the 25 referring domains to all their products that are the leaf nodes on their their structure. And I think as a tool like that, this thing is amazing. But if, if you're expecting this tool to win a keyword like payday loans, I think you're exactly yeah. right. The keywords like that have a 20 year head start on link building, and there's no easy button to negate that 20 year head start. Um, so you really want to look at a tool like this to, to, you know, give your, 
your leaf node pages just the boost they need to rise above the, the competition. Yeah, um, it's, it is designed for speed and coverage. And, you know, once you're on page one, you know, getting from six to five to four, you know, the it just goes up in, in terms of difficulty. So, you know, I still love press releases and, you know, other other link types of links as well for certain uh, pieces. But, you know, we built this originally because if I put out a brand new site and it's got 50 or 60 pages, I want links to all those. And I don't want to build, you know, them one at a time, one page at a time. So uh, yeah. we realized Let, that other people might want to use it, too. Let me ask you one last question before we move on to the show. What sure. happens when some aggressive SEO like Charles over there it, decides to take your tool and do something that draws the attention of Google to bring the smite hammer down upon Charles? What does that do to the rest of your customers? Nobody. And actually, we've got restrictions built into the tool, so it would be very hard for Charles to do that. But, you know, he's a clever boy. He'll figure out workarounds. <laughs> But his his damage is only to his particular um, his particular sites, his particular links. So, so there's no shared resources between no shared Charles resources. and my stuff. Okay, yeah, that's why it's the setup time you know takes it because you're setting up your own cloud properties, your own cloud connections that nobody else has access to. And and when I decide, you know, my SEO is good enough, so I'm going to cancel service and quit paying Lee, what happens to all my links? They go to hell, but you still get to keep them. <laughs> <laughs> you still get to keep them because they're yours. You know, they're yours. There's no, and that's the other thing. There's no undo button. There's just no way you own those links forever. So. Well, you can delete them if you don't want them because they're yeah. on your property, you do something, but nobody yeah. can take them away. Uh, nobody can take them away. Awesome. All right. So uh, thanks for sharing that. Check it oh, out, everybody. Uh, he probably has testimonials on the website. Is that true? Not yet. No, not yet. Because we just, like I said, we've just come out of beta. I haven't asked for uh, for those wonderful things yet, but... All right. Well, if you're in the Cora Skype community, feel free to ask for somebody who's using it about their experience. Uh, there are a number of people in the Cora Skype group who were in the beta. Yeah. All right. Um, oh, we got another person <clears throat> coming in. And uh, let me go ahead and... Stop sharing the slides. Yeah. And tell us about what we're talking about today, Lee. All right. So I was talking with a friend of mine uh, over in Australia, Everhart. Shout out to Everhart. Everybody knows Everhart. Um, and he was showing me something. And we were scrolling down through the, the, the SERPs. And I was like, wait, just a damn minute. Let me see if that's true in the U.S., and I started running what we're going to do here for a bunch of keywords and found that the SERPs had changed in some very, very interesting ways. So, you know, what I would suggest to anybody, if you're if you're at home right now, open up Google and search for the keyword of your choice. And we're going to we've got some keywords here that we're going to go through. Yeah, give me and one. Then, um Let's go with uh, Sterling Silver Amethyst Bracelet because we've used that one before. Or games, if you want to use games. I don't even care. <laughs> and I want you to keep scrolling down and hitting more and more and more until you hit the very, very bottom of the, the SERP. And when we get to the bottom, we'll have a couple of observations. So I'll wait till Ted gets there. If you're playing along at home, this is going to be fun. If you see more results, you got to click that. Yep. Just keep clicking more results until it goes, hey, um, there's, a, there's this Google, many. Google, if you're listening, I really miss pagination. It was a lot more elegant and intuitive. And <laughs> yeah, this uh, forced uh, page view on every page. They, you know, you can't jump to the end now. Yeah. It is a little bit of a pain 
in well, the Well, it, it increases their impression counter. But it's like literally making you page through every page they have. All right. Back. So first thing, the very bottom you'll see in order to show you the most relevant results, we'd admitted some entries very similar to the 223 already displayed. This number has risen for most of the keywords that I that I follow. Usually, you know, it's been, you know, 130 to 160. Occasionally, you'll get one that'll get up to around 200. This is a small keyword. It's at 223. We, we look at some, we'll look at some today that are over 300 in terms of the results. So yeah. the, the primary index has expanded. Yeah, by my, by my estimation, the primary index is about 50% larger. So the number of documents Google will let you find. And so this this is what's down here. So this is how many things can show up for this keyword. And then Google's estimation of the total documents that there are. So Google found uh, 10,300,000 documents for this keyword, of which 230 some are findable in search. So... Uh, the, the thing I like to poke at there is when you look at that 230 sum out of 10 million, uh, that equates to 0% of the web being findable in Google. It uh, is. But, but it's 50% but, more than it was yeah. a few weeks ago. <laughs> yeah. When you consider the number of keywords you can search, Google allocating 223 to just this one keyword, hmm. you can imagine how that's a very big data set. And Google allocating more space for search results per keyword is a good development. So uh, but down, what's what's yeah. in that new 50%? Oh yeah, this is where it gets fun. So we always found when you got down to the bottom, if you ever scroll down to the bottom, you'd find these books.google.com, you'd find dot it spam, you'd find foreign websites, things like that. So you still got the Google Books, but notice now what you're gonna see is a shit ton of social and press. So you saw TikTok, down there, there's TikTok, YouTube. YouTube, you saw Craigslist, you'll see Quora, you'll see Reddit um, down there. YouTube, Craigslist. Craigslist, there's Google, you know, Google Books and stuff like that. And it changes, the proportions change depending mm -hmm. on the type of keyword that you have. You'll see Instagram, you'll see Pinterest, TikTok. you'll see all of those things down YouTube. at the bottom. And what you don't see, what I haven't been able to find, is the old .it spam. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of it. And we would see .it spam on literally all keywords. Mm -hmm. And so we have past shows on, on web spam where we showed that, you know, we could take keywords from the audience and go find .it spam on any keyword you could imagine. We estimated that that uh, .it spam was taking somewhere between 5 and 15% of the whole primary index was nothing but that spam, and it's gone. And so if Google did that on purpose, kudos to Google, you finally fixed something important. <laughs> um, but since we're seeing all of this social media flooding in, it's possible that Google didn't intentionally fix .it spam. It's possible they just flooded search with social posts and that just pushed the spam out. Is yeah. a beneficial side effect of flooding search with social. Yeah, so that... we don't know which one it is, but you know, you can keep scrolling up for a while and then you'll start to hit results, you know, normal results exactly. again more frequently, but you will YouTube. still see or YouTube just answer all throughout it. Your YouTube. So if you guys are if you guys are on uh, the YouTube channel, Instagram, you know if you've got observations, YouTube, drop them in there Instagram. because you know this is new stuff that you're um, we're just finding 
uh, it's really, really cool to see that, but it also has some, you know, interesting implications if you use a lot of these social right. profiles. Before we get there, before yeah. we get there and we, we pollute the minds with our visions of exploits. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Well, Madge, let's, look at, let's look at some more keywords. So first, go up to the on. top on this one. Oh, go ahead. Madge, what do you think so far about this change in Google? I'm on the right direction. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What did you want me to do, Lee? Just go up to the top. Let me see what the, because you know what the top of the, you're very familiar with this particular search. So, you know, the players at the top, have they changed? Uh, Etsy isn't normally this way. Right. I'm surprised that Navica's <laughs> doing this well. Um, Amazon is down a bit, uh, but overall, these results are are not shocking. Like it's all the right players, but the order is a bit different. All right, let's try DUI Lawyer Los Angeles. <laughs> So this one, we'll look up at the top and notice the very first result. Yeah, that uh, that used to be uh, one of several locals. So the locals used to beat the directories here. Um, yeah, but that directory was losing. Now, notice also the Forbes. I'm going to point yeah, this one out. Forbes didn't used to be this high. Right. When I look at a number of local searches, Forbes is almost always on page one now. Nice. Yelp is no longer on page one. Oh, here's here's the former winner. One and two. <laughs> They've got to be pissed. Oh, for a keyword like this, this keyword sometimes gets above $150 a click and, and pay-per-click. So uh, these two dropping from top of page one to like bottom of page two, uh, that's annihilation. Right. That is annihilation. <clears throat> and if you scroll all the way down to the, the very, very bottom of the thing, let's see how big the SERP is. We're going to have to do a little GoFundMe for Ted's carpal tunnel surgery after this episode. <laughs> Google, bring back pagination. This new system sucks. Gonna get you I, I don't think quicker. anybody likes this. Like, this isn't better UI. And it's not friendly for people who have mobility <clears throat> uh, accessibility issues because you have to do this targeted mouse control. You know, maybe there's a secret keyboard shortcut for it, but holy crap, is this bad UI. All right. So we got 213 right there. There's 213 results. Can I can I omit the filter to see if anything mm -hmm. comes up? Sure. All right. Sorry, everyone. I got to redo the scroll because Google got rid of pagination. Hey. It's your wrist, dude. You do whatever you like. <laughs> All right. So these are the unfiltered DUI lawyer Los Angeles. So we'll see what else pops up. So while Ted is doing this, one of the items I noticed, so I'm a I'm a brand guy, so I started searching many brands, and I okay. found that as I got near the bottom, uh, not only was there a lot of YouTube, but there was a lot of video in general. So mm -hmm. the brands, <clears throat> a lot of a lot of uh, my brands and our competitors have their own video sections, and Google definitely seemed to be uh, indexing a lot of our video pages and a lot of competitor video pages. Well, yay for you, boo for them. This... Well, it's a yay for video in general. I think it's a yeah. it's it's a sign that you know if you can put video on your site, put video on your site. Yeah. So you see the books, Google Books there, but you see YouTube. Now, if we scroll and see what we see, All right, so YouTube. 
Wikipedia, YouTube. Uh, this is news. Yeah, TikTok. TikTok Yahoo news. news. TikTok. TikTok. Yeah, News Nation. LA Los Times. Angeles Times. Madge. There's a lot of press on here, man. Yeah, are you, your rates are raising this week, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> YouTube. TikTok. Like all press releases. Find a lot out of well. Yeah, yeah. If you don't have TikTok, <laughs> you might want TikTok. Reddit. Reddit. Yeah. yeah. And when you see on some of the professional ones, you'll Maybe. see a lot of LinkedIn's uh, appearing at the bottom. And so what's what's interesting about this is normally there are filters that limit a domain name to two results. Uh, mm. These particular outlets seem to be exempt to the two result filter now. So they just get to show whatever they got. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really interesting, too. Like that that particular characteristic of this could be game breaking and exploited. Like I, I could imagine somebody going aggressive on YouTube and TikTok and flooding the whole thing by having a lot of different channels. Right. And so, you know, the potential for bad actor behavior to swamp a SERP. <laughs> it's, it's scary. You know, there's potential there. Yeah. So let's try games because I haven't seen that one. And then we can try another another local one. All right. So we know who's number one. <laughs> yeah. And we know why. Um, all right. I, I'm glad to see AARP is climbing back up. So they they got a win in this uh algorithm update. So good job. Um A lot of the same players. There's Reddit. Ooh, bonus mm -hmm. listing. They got two. Yeah, addicting games. All right, so these guys have fallen far. They were always the top three, um, and now they're you know top of page three. Yes, they uh, they detuned their page. <laughs> yeah, let's. Let's just check and see what they did real quick. Oh. <laughs> that number used to be several thousand. Yeah, this is a classic example of detuning a page should be the very last thing you ever try. Yeah, this is why they're page three now. Well, maybe they're just happier there, Ted. You ever, ever thought about that? Not everybody I, likes the limelight of the top three positions for a mega keyword. Uh, well, you guys are braver than I. The lesson may be, if you're going to keyword stuff, stuff keywords in there. <laughs> well, look, look at this result. Look at this right here. So it's sponsored, but look at what they're getting away with. <laughs> Google allowed this. Yep. All right, let's plummet to the bottom. Let's plummet to the bottom and see what the the bottom of the SERP looks like. That's pretty cool. Google, your UI designer sucks. <laughs> They still haven't fixed it since the show started. They're clearly not customer responsive. Now we're starting to see the videos. <laughs> Google, did you test this UI? <laughs> did you actually put a tester on it? And did you listen to them? So <clears throat> 225. All right. <clears throat> YouTube, 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 YouTube. We need to run I, a I think you get the pattern this. here. 
Yeah, games have lots of YouTube videos. And so clearly the limit is allowed to be broken egregiously by YouTube. Well, others as well. So now, now if you have 50 YouTube channels and you pick your keywords wisely, you can dominate 50 results of the 223 allowed for the keyword. Mm-hmm. <laughs> See what's uh, what's interesting about this is I don't necessarily know if these are all gaming companies or gaming news outlets because it's hard to distinguish those from each other, mm -hmm. and I don't know the outlet, uh, the news gaming news brands. Um. So I would assume Game Rant is some sort of a gaming news site, so maybe it counts. I, I just don't know. Yeah. Cartoon Network. So yeah. So we're we're back into the you know the regular results again. <clears throat> now let's try what there's another fun one to try try image seo king this one had a bunch of people trying a bunch of different things let's see what it looks like now because before so it, this, it had very limited serps this was an seo contest keyword so people were competing in a contest for this one and i believe madge you were in this contest right yep. yeah me and uh, craig we were joint winners on this one there you yep. go so, so images are up there first, but look now. Bora, Medium, YouTube, Yahoo Finance, Facebook, Quora, Yahoo Finance, YouTube, Digital um, Journal. I'm hitting that page. I think I've got three or four spots on that page now. <laughs> Oh, you're going to have more. So if we go all the way down to the bottom, let's see what's... Facebook, YouTube. There's a contest entrant. <laughs> <laughs> LinkedIn. All right, so... I don't know what this is. That looks like somebody's entry, maybe. Or um, supporting. No, it. that no no, come back up to that one. That was that was the uh Fight Club episode that we did about that. Oh, but this isn't my domain. No, that was somebody pulling that and, and using it, you know, for their own stuff but you can see like there's a linkedin yeah youtube uh twitter because the whole thing was done primarily with youtube videos and press releases yeah there we go so, yeah, YouTube, TikTok, YouTube, uh, YouTube, YouTube, Pinterest. So what's what's interesting about doing this exercise is we're actually seeing which properties are hardwired into Google's system. Mm -hmm. So these would be kind of the the you know menu options you would want to consider. All right, is there another example or should we talk about the implications of this? I go one more, I, just go like Seattle Plumber or something like that, <clears throat> just so people can see another. Well, let me let me do uh, one in addition to that uh, real quick. 
because one of the hardest keywords for a long, long time to ever rank for was Google, because Google would monitor it, and they wouldn't allow anybody to rank for the keyword Google. And so because of that, they would uh, typically have, you know, between 40 and 60 search results for this keyword. And, you know, it has 25 billion documents and they would allow 40 to 60 search results for the keyword. So when we go to the bottom... You can see that there, there's 73. 73. So, you know, if it was 40 or 50 was before, that's, you know, somewhere between, you know, 30 and 50% increase in the index size for this keyword. Um, And so that's remarkable. Wait, 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 wait. Right there. Everybody's magazine. Look at that. Google gave himself wholly to the pursuit of liquid joy. <laughs> What the hell kind of book is this? I don't want to know. <laughs> Listen, um, you throw an affiliate link for that one. I'm going to buy it. <laughs> but here's the thing. Now, if you want to be in the search results for a difficult keyword like Google, you could do it with a YouTube video. Like there's a path to getting in here. And so now all of these people, you know, look at that. That's 12 years old. Boom, it's in there. Two years old, in there. One year old, in there. Ten months ago, in there. Six months ago, in there. Four months, three months. One week ago. Somebody decided a week ago and they got in on the one of the hardest keywords you could ever try to get into. One week ago, they got in. And they probably did it by accident they were hoping for youtube search traffic and now they're ranking for google organically and they did it a week ago mm -hmm. one week's time they got the hardest keyword ranking you could possibly get like this is how you get into payday loans <laughs> which we also looked at <clears throat> same at the bottom as it is with all these. See, there's Time Magazine. Yeah, CNBC. CNBC. Madge, you're going to own the SERPs, dude. Everybody should make friends. Send friend requests to Madge. <laughs> block, block, block. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, this is really interesting, man. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Thirty, so they they rank thirty for Google, and they did it by accident. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> so implications, implications of this. The first thing is there are fifty percent more search results for your target keyword and right. Google flooded those fifty percent of spots with social media and news posts. So you have to compete with more consumable content uh about what you're trying to sell. Yeah, I will also point out because we've looked at a number of these keywords, there are some that you will find that have your web twos, your WordPress, Tumblr, and Weeblies, you know, are, are down there as well. So what you see at the bottom, it, it's wide open right now, you know, in terms of those sort of uh, social and news uh, pieces. It is crazy um, seeing how much of that is is available. So, so 
one one implication of all of this is there's more spots for people to compete for uh there's more competition for those spots and google is giving special advantages to the competition so those social media sites and news sites they can violate the two results limit that the rest of us have to abide by because i'm not going to get 25 results for one domain name in here but they can and so that's that's kind of an unfair advantage for you know spamming now on on so that's bad news on the good news dot it spam is gone and so all of that stuff that was getting your weaker pages booted out, that's not in there. And what I've noticed is my weaker pages, which are single variable SEO test pages, those are back in play. So if you're doing two above, two below Kyle Roof style testing, that that works again. <laughs> and so that's really interesting. And before we would always struggle, we'd get like, you know, five test pages and five control pages, and we'd start seeing, oh, this one got booted, that one got booted, this one got booted, that one got booted. And then that's kind of how it would be. We'd have four of the 10 that would stick. And so getting 100% indexation to stick and testing was what was killing testing. And that isn't the current environment. And I think it has something to do with these changes. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, your, your weaker pages have a better chance of getting indexed and staying indexed. And what I've been seeing, you know, this past two weeks is I'm getting 100% indexation on every test I try to do. And that's remarkable. I haven't seen that for years. Um, obviously, this benefits uh, press release companies. So, Madge, what's what's your kind of final feel of this new change? I'm excited. Um, seeing the top publications doing really well, um, like your Yahoo's, your Forbes, your Times. I think if you the the top publications yes but i want to make sure because i even saw some that were your middle tier publications that are also sticking in there mm -hmm. but then the video side youtube tiktok guys that was all over the place <laughs> you know from start to finish you you kept seeing social media platforms there so using i think again it's not just having a pr company it's using your imagination and combining it with social media and with the podcast and whatever else, video, combining all three or four different things and dominating the index. Yeah. So let, let me paint a, an exploitation picture, just hypothetical. I'm not saying do this. I'm saying this is an implication of what Google's done. Um, so you have these accounts. You have a YouTube account you have a pinterest account a tiktok account a facebook account a twitter account so you want to announce something and you make a post on each one and it's all targeting a single keyword so all of those can independently rank now for the keyword so you could take you know if you had five social media accounts you could take five extra rankings for the keyword plus the two you can get from your website. So that all of a sudden you you could potentially be the top 7 if you if you did it well. Mm. That's a possibility that with one website and five of the right social medias and the right knowledge and know-how, you could be seven of the page 1 results. <laughs> Think um. about that. <laughs> Stephanie dropped a little comment in the uh, the internal chat. She goes, I remember someone talking about social media and this before on SEO Fight Club. <laughs> yeah. So those strategies that, that Stephanie laid out, um, it was last year um, that she laid out, might be extraordinarily potent at this point in time. 
Yeah. An another problem is you could have 20 Twitter accounts and you could keyword bomb those 20 different Twitter accounts and potentially take 20 search results mm -hmm. or 20 YouTube channels. So people who have a lot of social accounts and a lot of channels, they can focus that lens on a keyword and they could potentially cut yeah. a lot of people out. Yeah, we um, saw an example of that yesterday, Ted, when you and I were looking the the company that you're very familiar with and the keyword you're very familiar with. You saw, you know, multiple pages yeah. and spots just being taken up by all of these different properties for um for a, a nice keyword yeah they they probably had somewhere between 30 to 40 results and the overall search results in the primary index for the keyword so taking 40 spots um yeah. And that's that's in search today. Like that's that happened yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, so they're they're doing better as a result of this change. It, and they didn't intentionally exploit the change. They were just predisposed to do well because Google did this thing. Um, so it's not like they acted on it. It's Google made the change and they benefited in a yeah. ridiculous amount <laughs> because of how they're architected. Yeah. Um, so yeah, there's definitely room for exploitation on this. And so I don't know that Google has fully thought this through and no. how they intend to police it. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, there's a serious side to this too. Oh, I know Madge will be recoding some stuff this afternoon. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, if you look at this, you know, the the question that we would ask is if they're getting a boost in the in the index, all of these social sites, for example, do links coming from them have increased power? Well, increased we impact? know we know is a signal if if people see the YouTube video and then click the link in the description that Google sees that we know yep. that is a CTR signal. We know what CTR signals are capable of in different situations. Um, so yeah, I mean, yep. they're you know, just for some of these more potent now, you know, if I, if I put out a press release on some of these particular sites, because you're seeing, like Madge said, some of the middle tier are getting nice pickup on some of these keywords. You know, do, do they also have a bump in terms of, you know, what links pass to, you know, the target site? Because, you know, there now seems to be some favorite favoritism there for these types of properties. Well, and this amplifies influencer market marketing. So if you have an influencer that can rank well because they carry a lot of social media authority, it might be that if you pay them to talk about a, a particular topic on your behalf, that you will shoot to the top and search. Is hmm. that, is that a paid link? I don't think so. <laughs> it's just an influencer talking about you. It's right. paid, sure, but it's just, it's not the influencer's fault. Google made the algorithm this way. Now, if we go back to the top of the SERPs, especially for the stuff that we were looking at local. So just throw a Seattle plumber in there. Uh, we'll just see what those changes at the top are disturbing. <laughs> you know, where you're looking down here. And you'll see, you know, there's Beacon Plumbing, you know, a couple of local plumbing. Angie's list is still there. Reddit. Now this this is the new one. Yeah. That it ranking. Is. And there's Forbes. Yeah, that is. You know, expertise has been there for a while because um, that's just keyword stuffing. But there's Yelp on page two. It, sometimes that happens with Yelp. Um, but what what's... What's going to be frustrating to people is, um, you know, things like Reddit displacing your local business that that hurts someone. Yeah. 
you know, Forbes displacing a plumber that, that really hurts someone, you know? Yeah. Um, so yes, some people are going to feel some pain on this for sure. So Charles, there, that's a news organization that has templated <laughs> uh, city and service combinations and is ranking all over the damn place, getting traffic and everything else. <laughs> so <clears throat> that's, <clears throat> I don't like calling out people, but I will. Um, I, I wonder, I haven't looked at the site. I wonder if they're doing a little domain authority play there. Um, I know a lot of, a lot of news organizations, a lot of news sites have these, not just like coupons dot, but they have folks doing reviews and all kinds of things on their sites um, to utilize the the authority of their domain so they can rank for terms they normally wouldn't necessarily rank for. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what Forbes is doing. I'm just wondering if that's, that's what Google's picking up there inadvertently. I do not know. Google, I'm tired of your UI. <laughs> I've had to deal with it for an hour, and it's awful. Well, after the show, Ted, you can take a nap and put that wrist on ice. <laughs> YouTube, 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 YouTube. Hey, clearly, Google is favoring YouTube above all others. Yeah. YouTube. This is reminiscent. So years ago, like at least a decade ago, Google for about six months had run a test where they were putting a YouTube result at the bottom of every single page. <clears throat> and if you could get, <clears throat> if you were an affiliate and you could get your YouTube video ranking, you would have the page, you would have the slot 11 on every single page of Google and it would drive all kinds of amazing traffic until they took it away from you. Yeah. See all those news sites, YouTubes. Yeah, that's local TV. There's just a there's just a lot, but those SERPs the the you know when Forbes pushes its way on to page one of every local SERP, that means that's just one more local business that got you know plopped down to the back of the bus. So I can't imagine that this is better yeah. for users. <clears throat> All right. So let me stop the share. Um, I, I noticed some things in there, uh, not that keyword, but keywords previously, that uh, some of those YouTube videos were done by SEO companies. So I saw among those SEO, vid, uh, those YouTube videos, a lot of uh, SEO brands uh, publishing that content. Right. Um, uh, just saying, <laughs> uh, all those companies that were doing that uh, for their clients, uh, they're probably going to see an uptick and and those things performing and they ought to go make sure they go out and claim credit for that work when they get that traffic uptick on those mm -hmm. um because if you're not watching the views if you're not watching the traffic if you're only looking at rankings you might be missing some of your best bragging rights as a result of this yeah, Ben shared that Forbes has been going after things like this in the affiliate space for a long time. Yeah, you do see that. I mean, even in yoga pants, you know, when we looked at that over the years, you know, Forbes uh, was one of the top, you know, if not the top article on the page. But well, in the, the local, that's new. The, the you know, the, the okay part of the Forbes scenario historically is they were governed by the filter like the rest of us. They'd get one or two and then the damage was kept. But now the damage is uncapped because YouTube and TikTok can take 30 of the results. Um, all right, let's do some questions here. Uh, 
thank God you guys are back. Life is uh, boring when I don't get my ordinary dose of SEO Fight Club. Sorry about that. I had a, a back operation and, uh, a, and a family vacation, and Lee had a conference, and Charles had a conference. and Yeah. So we're back now. Um, all right. Uh, can I use podcast episodes to create backlinks to my blog posts? Uh, often, yeah, you can put in uh, uh, reference links in the descriptions on the different podcast platforms. You have to see what the podcast allows. It's like harder to do in, in some platforms than others. So you have to take it on a platform by platform basis. Um, let's see. Google's feature called popular products is killing my affiliate pushing my pages down yeah welcome to ecom you know it, when all of your product keywords have you know a foot and a half of uh paid ads uh, above the organic it's just brutal and that's just how google is so there's no seo trick to make that go away unfortunately um Oftentimes, uh, you want to employ when you're stuck in that, that's when things like featured snippet might help you get above, uh, the ads. So you may have to, for those keywords, switch to a featured snippet strategy to get above it all. Uh, but see how it behaves, see what you can pull off, you know, run some experiments. Don't do, uh, don't do a site-wide strategy to begin with. Take like one product or one category that nobody cares about and test with that until you find a winning formula. Uh, what do you think, Lee? Yeah, I agree with you. I was just noticing something that, that Charles had dropped in the, the chat about hire a professional plumber. So Charles, you want to say something about that one? And we we can pull it up if we need to. What'd you... Yeah, I was just searching some of the links inside the For Forbes articles that we had found, and uh, they're doing really well for a lot of these local stuff. I don't know if this is new. I've never looked into it before, so maybe this is not new. Maybe they've been doing this for years. They've been successful for years. Um, no, it's definitely new. because Yeah, not in local, you know. In local. affiliate, yeah, sure. But yeah, they've Forbes is got a lot of stuff in this in this local niche I'm, and i just i haven't left plumbing yet um i have a suspicion <laughs> they got a lot more stuff than just plumbing mm -hmm. there's going to be meetings aren't there charles <laughs> there's going to be meetings <laughs> well you see the dilemma is this is you know is this run afoul of google's domain authority penalty that they've just talked about um, they just came out relatively recently saying, hey, we're going to be looking at this algorithmically and manually. Um, or is this considered OK? Is this <laughs> it's sensibly and insanely? Yeah, like like it's de de decent content. <clears throat> they've got authors. They've got they've got, you know, auth uh, people who've reviewed it. So they've done all, every. You know, it looks like it's really quality content. It doesn't look like it's just been thrown up. Um, but uh you know, this Google's the same company who says that news organizations can't put coupons, even though, as Ted pointed out a couple of weeks ago, coupons are the number one thing they news organizations used to put in the papers when they distributed them. Why couldn't mm -hmm. we do it digitally? Exactly. That's just First Amendment stuff. And if Google starts punishing First Amendment, you know, stuff, then we need antitrust law to come <laughs> smack them down. Um. So, yeah, yeah, you know, Google has to be mindful, otherwise there will be a rebellion. Um, or at least I would hope that people mm -hmm. would get mad. You know, I guess people uh, have been handed their hat by Google enough times, maybe they'll just take it and mope away or something, but we shouldn't. We should get vocal and loud when Google is bad. Um Let's see. How often does Google revisit a de-indexed website? I would argue that my understanding is it's about as often as a, an indexed website. Um, there are some recent changes that, that might change that. And technically, I haven't tested this remotely recently. So all of my knowledge is, is out of date. But if you put a backlink 
onto a de-indexed page, that backlink still passes authority to whatever you point it at. And so this has been proven by multiple testing groups on multiple occasions running independent testing. Will a de-indexed penalized page pass authority? And the answer is yes, it will. Um, and so because of that, Google still is going to crawl links to that page. They'll find links in the wild and they'll say, I wonder where this link goes to. Oh, it's that penalized page. Oh, it has a link. I'll crawl it there. So all of that behavior still functions as normal. So you will typically see Googlebot on those de-indexed websites, even though they're de-indexed. Uh, what's your recollection, Lee? Yeah, I mean, what you're saying is true. You know, I, I find that, um, you know, even on pages on legitimate non-penalized sites, if you've got pages that aren't indexed, periodically Google still comes back and crawls them. They check on them and just say, hey, you know what? It's still the same thing it was before. So there's no change in our, you know, our indexation status for those pages, but they still keep crawling them even if they don't love them. So I can't see why that would change at all with a de-index site either. Um, a question, I assume this one is mostly for Lee. If I build cloud site links to my page, will it boost the ranking even if I don't build links to my cloud site? Well, <clears throat> I hate to give the it depends, but it, it does. So. If you built the best damn backlinks in the world to your page and it didn't move, I would tell you that it wasn't backlinks that your page needed that, you know, prevented you from, from ranking higher or you didn't, you know, build enough of them. If you need 10,000 of them, you built 10. That's a problem. Sometimes there's other other factors there. So, yeah, it'll move the page, but how much depends on the strength of the page that you're pointing them to and the strength of the SERP and the competition they're going up against. And I would point out that, you know, if you're going from number 70 to number 40, that's a whole lot easier than going from number seven to number four. So right. you have to remember, it's not a linear thing. The closer to the top you get, the harder each step is to take. Yeah. And so if you're, you know, number four and you want to be number one, then getting some cloud links might do nothing at all. Uh, but if you're number 70, then getting some cloud links might make you number 30. Right. Um, so, you know, keep in mind that your situation's details are relevant to what you can expect. The other thing I'll, I'll tell, because this question comes up a lot, I don't think there's anything magical about cloud links. You know, I'm not looking at it because, oh, the domain authority or because they're clouds and Google loves clouds or something like that. We built them on these properties because they're easy to implement and it's easy to get with the, the cloud uh, properties that we utilize. You want to get 25 referring domains. It's very easy to do that using this method. So it's, you know, so if, if people are thinking, you know, I'm not touting this as, oh, your domain authority will go through the roof or these particular magical bean links, you know, that are going to shoot you up to number one, you know, they're just a link on a property mm -hmm. control. And if you want to power them up, you can power them up um, and get better effect out of them. They're, they make a nice tier one. Yeah, and most people think of link building in terms of the ceiling. Can it push me to number one? Uh, you know, when you think about these cloud link type of strategies, you should think about the floor instead of the ceiling. You should say, well, for all of my do nothing pages, can we kind of raise the bar on all of those easily? And so you want to elevate the floor instead of uh, raising the roof. Um, and so this, this would be an elevate the floor. So let's do a, a fundamental thing across the board where all products get 25 backlinks, you know, all the time, you know, yeah. that raised the floor. Yeah. It's no different. I mean, you know, I could sit there and say, Oh, uh, <laughs> I uh, got an press release from Madge and I didn't get to number one. Those press releases suck, you know, but it's, <laughs> you know, you, you, I might not mention that it was for mesothelioma and my site had technical issues, <laughs> you know, a whole bunch of other 
uh, things that, you know, can prevent, you know, movement or the type of movement that we would hope for. Yeah. And my quality content only mentioned the keyword six times and my competitors mention it 2,732 times. Yeah. They always overlook that detail too. Yeah. Addicting (laughs) games, put the games back in. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, let's see, where was I? I don't want to skip one. Um, how do I measure what Google's crawl budget is for my site? Um, I, I think there's probably an easier way to get to the information you need, which is, is your site getting completely crawled? And so what you typically want to do is you want to make a list of all of your canonical URLs on the site, and then you want to scan your web logs for a Googlebot visit to each URL so you can have someone write a script to do that analysis. And then you can figure out which URLs did or didn't get a Googlebot visit. Um, and oftentimes the problem you'll find is that Googlebot gets into things that shouldn't be getting into. It's the classic Googlebot goes to your online store. It sees your socks category. It visits the socks category. It says, look, I can sort by price ascending. Oh, look, now I can sort by price descending. Oh, look, I can sort by product name alphabetically i could sort it by alphabetically in reverse i can uh, then i can uh take this product and add it to cart oh wow look at this card it's amazing there's even a remove button let me remove these socks from the cart and it does all of that for hours within your sock category and then google says oh we're all out of time we'll come back next month um sorry we didn't get to the whole thing but uh boy we are really impressed with your socks category great job on that guys (laughs) and the rest of your site gets no love and that's it's usually a problem like that and so look at your web logs see what google's getting into uh charles you deal with that all the time what's your take on that just found that today literally today on one of our subdomains someone did a migration to a new cms they created a huge spider track not only did the facets blow out but the links to the products all had parameters on based on the facets so Mm -hmm. we've got some work ahead of us (laughs) Yeah, and Google retired the easy fix, so now you got to do it with web development. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Uh, What are the parts Google is updating when they do updates? All right. So a lot of people like to look at Google's naming for updates. It's a penguin, it's a caffeine, it's a mayday, you know, and they use Google's update nomenclature. And Google never tells us what's in those. And it's nebulous and it's always poorly defined. And so I I just don't even bother playing that game. I think it's kind of stupid. Instead, I use my eyes and I look at things that are changing that i can observe changing in search and i talk about those changes i can see and behaviors and presentation and coding those changes i can see those are what i call updates and so i classify those so there are updates to how the algorithm behaves algorithm updates There are updates to the HTML styling of the search results. And when Google changes those, all your rank trackers break and you think you lost all your rankings and, you know, you're running around screaming the sky is falling. When in fact, nothing has changed uh, changed at all other than your rank tracker can't parse the search results. And if you manually check, it's totally fine. That's an HTML update. And then Google will 
take their different search engines, image search, ad search, people also ask search, web search, uh, product search, and they'll adjust the balance of how much of each is in the search results. I call that a meta blending update because they're uh, updating the blend of universal search. Um, and then uh, there's updates that people don't typically see, like Google changes what zones of a page are in and out of play for indexation. And so Google has made it so that meta keywords is a no index zone. If you put a test keyword into meta keywords, JL396R23, you will never find that keyword if that's the only place it is mentioned. But you take that keyword out of there and you put it in a nav tag and let Google process it, then boom, now it's findable because the nav tag is a do index zone of the page. And so when Google updates which parts of the page are in and out of play, we call that a zoning update. And then uh, there are search intent updates where Google changes the behavior of how they understand the queries that are typed into search. So they can change that logic, and that would be a search intent update. And, and so I find it's, as an SEO, it's a lot more useful to look at things we can see with our own eyes instead of playing, you know, mm -hmm. is it a, I got hit by penguin panda caffeine mayday. What should I do? <laughs> you know, that's, that's kind of a silly game. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, I think it is because in in those things, Google's pronouncements are very vague. Um, SEO's ability to reverse engineer them are are very limited uh, because Google also has continuous updates. So you know, an analysis that I ran this morning is out of date. You know, two hours later because they'll run. I forget the number. It's, it's a ridiculous number, but basically, there's there's updates running, multiple updates running each day. Um, without a core update, you know, or one of the bigger updates uh, going on. So the only thing you can do is just kind of reverse engineer the SERPs to see what are the rules right now? You know, and what is it that, that are the, the levers that I can utilize to rank my page? And I'm less concerned about um, drops or, or rises that coincide with a Google announced update and in thinking that there's a cause effect relationship there. You know, a lot of times I find stuff rises and falls around the time of an update, but have nothing to do with the update. So. Yeah. The, the best thing you can do is use your own eyes, actually go look and get a pointy stick that you can poke Google with. Um, all right. So let's see. Ah, here we are. What can I learn from my competition by comparing their page source with mine? Um, you know, I, I would look for the basics. Like, you know, what, what words are they using that you're not using that might be relevant? Uh, how often are they using those terms relative to how often you're using those terms? Um, what types of SEO tactics are they employing? And you can often make a glossary of tactics for your keyword. I would recommend keeping it in a PowerPoint slide deck. Here's a list of all the unique SEO attempts. I saw all of my competitors made. I took pictures of each and every one. So now when I need an idea to address a deficit, I can go look at the menu and see what fits the bill. Um, you know, so there's a lot of things you can do there. What a lot of people don't think about is, well, what are their competition doing to look at you? You know, so that's a real question. Are you allowing uh, the Moz bot to come and analyze your pages and sell your tuning standards to the highest bidder? Are you allowing SEMrush to 
come look at your tuning standards and sell them to the highest bidder? Are you allowing Ahrefs to do that? Um, so you should kind of look at your tool set and you should block everything else as best you can. Uh, cause why on earth would you let people sell your tuning standard to the highest bidder? And most people, they take no action on that. They put in tons of R and D and they figure out something cool and somebody else pays, you know, $87 to some company and does what you did. And what did it cost you to figure that out? Cause it cost them 87 bucks. <laughs> Um, what do you think, Lee? No, I agree. I think, you know, it's good that, because I find that most SEOs don't look at the source code, you know, so it's good. You can find a lot of stuff in there, you know, like today, wandering through the SERPs, you know, we open up games, we find addicting games. We see, you know, the, the keyword has plummeted from, I think it was 8,000 something at its peak, uh, to 440. Um, and you know, they're, they're, corresponding drop in the SERP, which you'd be predicting from using your keyword less. Um, so I applaud that. But drawing conclusions is where it gets tricky because I can look at a source and I'd say, oh, they're doing this. That's why they're ranking better. And very seldom is it one thing. And most of the time, it's not usually the one thing that we look at. It's a whole combination of things. So that's where tools like Quora, especially the shared data, where you can sit there and say, hey, you know, the... H3 tag seems to be, you know, uh, carrying a lot more weight, you know, entities are, are up, down schemas up, down, you know, number of images used up, down, you know, you can see those sort of, uh, relationships and see the trends much more clearly generally than you can by looking at individual pages and, and try to classify the, the general approach. Because I'll look at the search results and like the top five, they might be using different strategies. You know, number one might be skyscraper, you know, huge content keywords throughout. And then number two might be a keyword density play. And number three might be loosely relevant, but they went nuts with off-page SEO. Mm -hmm. Number four, dig Clint schema. <laughs> You know, number five went with entity density and, you, you know, there's more than one way to rank a page and sometimes, uh, you can't use one of those strategies. Like it's just not reasonable to do it. And so if you pick one that's using a strategy you can't do for whatever reason, you'd be silly to emulate them. Uh, so you, you know, you have to kind of classify the general approach they're taking and then, you know, figure out what makes sense for you and how you compete with those other approaches. Um, all right. I find myself doing that a lot because a lot of times I'll see stuff and I'll be like, <clears throat> that's awesome. I can't do that. Uh, for one reason or either logistically or just it's <clears throat> maybe a little riskier than I'd want to do. But yeah, sometimes you just have to acknowledge and move on. Well, it's a, it's a whole different game in your your space because everything is done at scale. So you've got to, you know, engine get a whole engineering organization behind it. And once it's done, it's not like you can go, oh, let's just revert back to the previous version of a site, especially as a news organization where you're very real time across the majority of your site. So there's a lot more that goes into those decisions. Somebody asks, why does Google check feed pages? I see them in Search Console, Crawled, Not Index. Uh, Google's going to those because they are publishing what's new and what's updated. And so that's a concentrate about your website, about what's new and what's updated. So it's a priority queue for Google. Um, the danger of those RSS feeds for syndication is that other people can syndicate your content. So if you're not doing that properly and your SEO has been struggling for a long time now, you might want to turn off the RSS syndication because you're allowing people to syndicate your content to all over. And oftentimes those syndication sites can 
get your content discovered on their site before Google even finds it on your site. And then they become the canonical source for the content. So if you don't know what you're doing with RSS, I highly recommend you turn it off. Um, all right. Uh, any thoughts on syndication? No, you nailed it. <clears throat> all right. Let's see. In my robots.tech, should I let Google visit everything? Or is there a benefit to using disallow? You want to disallow your faceted navigation. You want to disallow your shopping cart. You probably want to disallow anything that Google can get into an infinite loop, sorting, ascending, and descending, and filtering. And so there are... Lots of things you want to probably disallow logging in, you know. Um, so yeah, uh, let's see. Um, Lee, your login page on Witcher Labs is indexed. Interesting choice. Yeah, any comment? One a choice, probably was just an oversight. Never assume that I know what I'm doing. All right. Uh, Google is uh, taking away the website brand name. I'll. Go, I'd like to go to the. I'd like to go oh, to the gallery too. So second. let's go to the gallery together, and then I'll go there, to my other mute, thing. Mute that there one. we go. There we go. Um. All right. Now I got to find where I was. Google has taken away the website brand name at the end of the title. Not for everyone. They split test that. It's a page by page uh, split test determination. Uh, how do I get it back? Um, typically, when Google's rewriting your title or your meta description, it's a relevancy issue. So if you make your title more relevant to the uh, for the keyword and for the page content, that's kind of the art to getting control. Um, that's that's what you typically want to do. Um, but yeah, just know that Google's split testing that, and that's that's a result by result decision. Um, uh, things that cause problems with that is if you have uh, inconsistent behavior and in brand. Uh, cool. For example, the textbook example of <laughs> inconsistent branding is Sears. Because they do Sears with a capital S, Sears with a little s. They do capital S, Sears.com, little s, Sears.com, capital S, Sears, comma, Inc., uh, lower s, Sears, comma, Inc. Uh, and, and so you, you got to be consistent everywhere. You can't have a different version of the brand on every page because then Google goes into split testing hell and eventually Google says to hell with it, no brand. <laughs> and so look for inconsistencies and try to be uh, strict about it. And that applies, especially what we're seeing now with the certs, that applies to inconsistencies in social accounts, all, all third parties. Uh, mm -hmm. you, can you can really mess up your knowledge panel that way. I've seen that happen, so be careful. All right. Lee, how do you use press releases? Straightforward. <clears throat> the the way that I use press releases is just to, to boost a page. I will write a press release and optimize it for the same keyword that I'm trying to rank the page for. You know, this is where Ted and I have some disagreements over this particular thing, but um, that's the way that I do them. So I just like to, you know, after I've, fixed a site and I have the page optimized the way I want it and I'm ready for links. If I, you know, need a lot of referring domains, press release is a way to go. If I need fewer referring domains, you know, I might use the simple link tool or um, sometimes I might even construct, you know, links manually, you know, just go to uh, Tumblr, WordPress, you know, some, some things like that just to construct a few links or build a, a cloud page or something manually. So it just depends. But press releases are just a nice little solve a referring domain solution or problem. 
why is traffic from Bing much more profitable than Google traffic? My analytics shows that per user, they buy twice as much. Uh, yeah, that's what I saw in retail yeah. too. And my theory is, is that all the fake bogus bot traffic is largely on Google. So you are much more likely to be seeing human beings from Bing traffic. But if you're also looking at buyer to buyer, Bing is is generally stronger than Google. And the reason is the demographics are different. The uh, the demographics on Bing tend to be older, higher income um, sort of thing in general. So your your visitor is from, on average, a wealthier pool. Yeah, you're more likely to get a grandparent on Bing than you are to get a grandparent on Google. <laughs> um, let's see. Lee, your simple link tool sounds good. Should it be pointed directly to the money site or used uh, to point to tiered link building? Yes, <laughs> I do both. Mostly we built it to point at the money site, you know, and in the training videos, we talk about the safety precautions uh, to utilize with that. You know, if you're going to do some additional tiered links to those, but yeah, I point them to the money site. Let's see. Uh, Derek says the new Google system without pagination is the lineup to the uh, till full of junk. Uh, like in a grocery store. Oh, of junk food. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's it's the impulse thing. They're getting impressions and showing more ads. So it's ad impressions, absolutely. Um, let's see. Uh, video SEO is uh, my focus for a reason. That's uh, Calgary Music. So if you need a video SEO, you probably ought to reach out to Calgary. Uh, let's see, Dan Hale, don't show this to Holly. Uh, I, I don't know. I, you know, if, if Holly can provide for her family, she should. Holly's here, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, can someone, uh, talk about the Google patent information gain and, uh, what this means it looks to be a ranking factor um you know i i don't i haven't read that patent and i i do have thoughts on the topic in general but i haven't read the patent um what what i've seen in recent years is that when there's an ingredient list that's you know interesting data when there's a list of pros and cons about a thing, that's interesting data. And I've seen Google find these types of information and they will give them special presentation at times in the search results. So we're seeing that Google's looking for it. They're parsing it. They're storing it. And occasionally they're presenting it. How much of a leap of faith is it to assume they might be scoring with it too? So that would kind of be the fundamental of where I would approach a patent like that from is, you know, four of the five things I look for are observable in search. So now I'm only interested, are there any details about how they score it? Um... Let's see. Uh, what is the point if I write Google, I want to use search, not watch a video? Um, you know, yeah, you know, in a way, I'm I'm on a fence about this new change. I, I like that .it spam is gone. I like the press releases are going to probably be massively juiced as a result of this. Uh, I like that there is a pathway into previously impossible keywords. Those are good things. I do not like that you have 50% more competitors and that 50% more competitors has special advantages you don't have. 
uh, in terms of getting updated quickly, getting indexed rapidly, being able to violate the two results per domain filter. Those are serious advantages. <laughs> and so that's not good. I mean, that's exploitation town. Um, so yeah, you know, I'm, I'm really on the fence about it. There's some good sides, there's some bad sides. Uh, but as long as we all know Holly's going to win, <laughs> <laughs> I guess there's that. Um, let's see how it shapes up on May 5th. Uh, we'll now consider very low value third party content produced primarily for ranking purposes and without close oversight of a website owner to be spam. Uh, we're publishing this policy <laughs> two months in. Uh, so this sounds like Simon White is quoting something out of Google about what they plan to do about low quality content. And it's a really interesting point given they just flooded the search results with an extra 50% of what most website owners would consider low quality content. I bet most social media influencers and YouTube content creators love this change. So I, I think it'll depend on which audience you're asking how they feel about it. Right. Um, it's a really good point though. Uh, so Simon, I think you hit the nail square on the head with that. Um, let's see on mobile, uh, you get YouTube shorts carousel at the top of the results. So that's an interesting development too. Uh, Jack says he loves Forbes. So, uh, hopefully that's in an SEO context cause I have questions otherwise, uh, we know, uh, Google is in bed with Reddit, uh, yep. for Google Gemini data scraping. So yeah, this might be a precursor to some sort of AI capability. They could be putting in groundwork for some new capability we don't know or understand yet. Um, I, I think Forbes just fell in with the cohort of news things, news and press release things. So announcement type things. So they probably got swept in with, with a cohort. Um, let's see. Uh, I own uh, Florida business press releases. So yeah, that should be good news for you there too. Uh, we need an episode on how to use press releases where everyone shares their methods and thoughts. Uh, you know, I've, I've already shared my methods. They're pretty basic and, and Ooh. I use press releases sparingly. I'm, I'm of the approach that a page generally needs like one and done most of the time. So if you're out there doing eight, nine, 10 press releases, I'm sure those companies love you, but, uh, that's, that's not how I roll with them. I uh, know Lee has his techniques. So the, the problem is everyone has different needs and the needs really dictate the, the method. What do you think, Lee? Yeah, I agree. <clears throat> you know, the, the, everybody's got their own little secret sauces and things like that, that they'll utilize their press releases for they'll build into their press releases and so forth. But, you know, generally speaking, um, <clears throat> if you go with the, the basic out of the box, if you reach out to Madge and say, hey, you know, I've got a client, it's a plumber in Seattle, and they need a press release, talk to you a little bit, you know, if, if everything is good, the, the press release will move the needle for you. But, you know, don't expect it to take, you know, a, a turd to the top of the SERPs. That's. Yeah. And he's asking for a, a, a bit more of specific guidance. So here's what I would do is an SEO to use press releases for SEO, I would look at the referring domains I need to be competitive for a particular keyword. And usually what you see on the broad 80% of keywords is the referring domains for the top 10 are like, you know, 11, 0, 4, 1, 132, 57, 2, 11. And when I see that, I view that in referring domains as a tie. 
And everyone's like, well, how can that be a tie? They're clearly not a tie. Because I quantize it into a standard candle. And that standard candle is press releases. And a press release will typically get you a value of about 500 referring domains. So those top 10 websites are closer to zero than they are to one. Mm -hmm. So they are a tie. They all have zeros. And if I got a one, I win. And so I would look at that and go, my whole off-page strategy is one simple, white hat, honest press release. Not eight, not 12. I'm not going to load it with stacks and embeds and map injections and all the SEO whistles and bells. Because that stuff, while it works, I'm not saying it doesn't work, it makes a very potent press release. My experience has been if you add all the SEO whistles and bells, it gets pruned faster. And when I don't do that, I can get 12 to 18 months out of a press release. So I keep it simple and I keep it on topic and I have it linked to the page I need to rank. And I'm not worried and on the SEO side, I'm not worried about getting into the New York Times and Reuters and Yahoo Finance. Uh, you know, as a plumber, you don't need to be in the New York Times. The only time a plumber gets into the New York Times is when they've done something very, very illegal. So just <laughs> note that we're just trying to get a number. You're just trying to set a base layer. We're trying to raise that floor. And oftentimes one honest white hat press release is what the situation calls for. But you might be in a case where for page one, you need 1200 referring domains. Well, that quantizes to three press releases. And oftentimes you can't use the same service because you'll get the same domains. There'll be overlap, but if you want to try to get as many of the domains you need, now you're kind of looking at doing one press release through three different providers to get that breadth. And that can be tricky uh, because they oftentimes overlap. What do you think, Madge? Um, firstly, I would quantify uh, finding out what, if they're doing it for a client, what they're looking for. Are they doing it for reputation management? Are you doing for referring domains? Are you trying to rank on page one of Google, right? Or are you doing a bit of everything? Now, yes, you're right. Using one PR company. The good thing about Magic PR is we have every US distributor on board. So whether you use the basic package of bronze, which is 500 referring domains, that will get you your referring domains. But if mm -hmm. you have a client that wants a bit more of a push, then you can go to the middle package where it not only give you the referring domains, but it will also give you that extra push. Because as we just saw in Google, a lot of these medium-sized publications are ranking highly on page one. Not on page one, but in the SERPs. And using a few cloud links, using a bit of guest post links, whatever it may be, to push up those publications could get, get you more than one position on page one. Not just ranking your uh, your own site on page one, but also a publication next to it. So the end goal, it depends on the client. Now, firstly, if you're doing a PR for the first ever time for a client, please just target the brand. Focus on the brand, focus on the homepage. Once you've done that, then move over to your other pages. I wouldn't start on the other pages not start targeting the main brand first. That's my intake. There you go. Saved you a course. <laughs> <clears throat> All right. How would you build links to marketplace websites? Um. All right. Um. So a marketplace would have two options there. They would either want to promote the marketplace to other shoppers and sellers, and those would be two different marketing campaigns, uh, or they could promote the merchants that are already in their marketplace or the products that are already in their marketplace. So you could potentially have 
four different marketing campaigns that have different objectives and KPIs. And so you'd really have to figure out which of those is the opportunity you're trying to go at with this question. And then you could start to think about a strategy for that opportunity. Uh, what do you think, Lee? You know, it's always the, the you know, what's the, the goal of the, you know, the links and stuff like that, because sometimes you're looking at stuff, you know, to take up another uh, position. Sometimes you're just looking at a power up. Sometimes you're just looking at, you know, to, to try to uh, cover a deficit. So, you know, it's like what Madge was talking about, you know, are you doing it for reputation management or, you know, all of these different things. It's because how you construct a link and the way that you build, you know, a link building campaign has everything to do with what's the goal and, you know, then determining what's necessary. Like I said, sometimes, you know, using press releases, going back to the earlier question, sometimes using a press release is overkill. If I need, you know, one link, that's not hard to do. I'm not going to sit there and, you know, pay for a big press release and a big distribution. If I need one link, I can go build that myself or utilize the simple link tool and, you know, go build 25 of them just like that. And I'm done. So, you know, and what are you going up against? You know, what's the competition? If I'm trying to do, you know, plumber Chicago, I'm going to need something different than if I'm looking at, you know, a plumber in Bernie, Texas, you know, population is tiny. And pretty much if you throw up a website, you're on page one. So, you know, the link building needs are very, very different depending on the situation. Uh, Derek from Arnie on media says, shout out to Madge. Uh, I, my recent PR campaign did well for my clients. Good, solid movement in the SERPs. So you got a testimonial in chat there. Uh, mm -hmm. Holly Stark says, hey, Lee, and well, the other guys. Nice to <laughs> see you. <too." laughs> okay. Uh, nice. she says, just get out of SEO. It's dead. Admit it guys. <laughs> LOL. Um, I, I don't see it as being dead. I've actually found recent ranking exploits that are ridiculously. Well, uh, <laughs> just, just in <laughs> full disclosure, Holly has uh, recently launched a social media service before this stuff broke. So, oh, oh, so this, this isn't uh, uh, get out, it's dead. This is get out, I'm <laughs> about to level all of you. <laughs> so, that could, that could be an interpretation of that. <laughs> all right. So, she's, she's going to go nuts on the social media side, is what that's telegraphing. So, yeah. look out, guys. She's, she's, looking forward to this new change um let's see music calgary says uh, hope you're raking it in she probably is holly does well uh hello everybody just came here don't know if i'm out of my top but my question is how would uh one optimize for a free tool for adsense uh, without site squatting. Well, uh, uh, you know, I would look at the keywords, you know, AdSense tools, free AdSense tools, and I would create pages for those. Um, odds are those are going to be roundups. So you're going to want to list all your competitors. But the cool thing is, is it's your roundup. You can put your tool at the number one spot. And that type of uh, influence pressure, uh, it actually works. It can convert. So I, I would try to make roundups. And the interesting thing about those roundup articles is we do see them being quoted in uh, local search. So Google will actually list businesses that are mentioned in roundup. So we know Google is collecting and processing <laughs> this content. Right. Uh, the other crazy thing is we know that these roundup articles have an impact on AI language models. And so when they're trained on a corpus of these roundups, they end up producing roundups of their own that then repeat the same tool. So you would actually be doing future AI optimization by creating these roundup articles and getting them out there so next generations of AI can be trained on your list where you're number one. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's just a, a general approach. You know, I'd put 
anywhere that would let you talk about your free tool, you should talk about your free tool. So if that means web 2.0s and social media and YouTube videos and roundup articles, uh, the bigger the splash you make, the better you'll do. What do you think, Lee? I think it's awesome. The other thing I might consider is this is one where I might reach out to uh, Madge and say, I want a press release, but I want, you know, a push. I want pickups and things like that. Because if people read the article about, hey, you know, so-and-so launches free AdSense tool, when you say free, people will flock to it to go click and and get access to it. Even if they never use the thing, they will, you know, download it or sign up for it or whatever it happens to be. So that, that's a good use for you know, legitimate press. Um, and I love the roundups. And don't forget, that editor's choice is a very powerful conversion factor for, you know, so if you're writing your own top seven tools to do this in AdSense, yours is number one, yours is the editor's choice. People love that, that particular uh, spot. They, they click on that shit a lot. Holly says we need an episode of stop being scared of Holly. Um, (laughs) Yeah. You know, We'll we'll always be a little bit, little bit afraid, <laughs> uh, just because it, it's not it's not fear that Holly is is bad or is going to do anything bad. It it's really taken on a reputation like Chuck Norris, like we're in love with the Chuck Norris jokes, and you can literally replace Chuck Norris with Holly in any Chuck Norris joke, and it would it would be fitting, and so yeah. it's. You know, we we kind of like the badass reputation. And so I, I don't think we'll let it go. So I think you're stuck with it. Um so what what do you think, Lee? Uh, well, I know that Holly Holly challenged Chuck Norris to a fight and he no showed. So that just tells you all you need to know right there. Yeah, I, I heard that a rattlesnake bit Holly and the rattlesnake died. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> nah, Holly's Holly's very sweet. The thing that Holly does, and actually back when she was doing SEO, she actually did the community of public service because nobody tests at scale the way that she did. You know, nobody did that sort of thing. So, you know, who else, you know, would send, you know, 10 million traffic hits, you know, in an hour to a particular SERP? Yeah. You know, we found out a lot based on um when you throw a crap ton at Google in a hurry, or when you just throw a crap ton at Google in general, you know, how do they respond? Where are the upper limits? So that was great for that sort of stuff. Yeah. And consider this Holly, you know, I, I would, you know, a lot of people say she's black hat. I'd put her in the testing realm because she spent about 20 grand in cell phones and probably six figures of her own time figuring out how driving directions work for local. This is like very well documented. Everybody knows it. Mm -hmm. So how many SEOs do you know that put $120,000 into a test to figure out how something works? So there's not not many. That's that's badass. Um, All right, let's see. Uh, Holly says YouTube has a massive exploit going right now. Maybe I should stop reading. (laughs) I don't think many people have seen it as far as I can see, uh, tell, uh, see or tell less than, uh, 0.001% have found it, which is nice. AKA Ted, you're not doing it. I already checked. Yeah, I, I don't try hard on YouTube. Uh, if you want to fill me in, in in a private message, sure. But generally, YouTube makes no money for, for us on SEO Fight Club. It's just a labor of love. So I do a very half-assed poor job with uh, YouTube. It's just not worth the time, generally. Uh, but I'm always open to clever ideas and tricks. Um, Holly Starks, I had an idea. At, oh, well, uh, I won't share your idea everywhere. So take that to a PM, man. Um, all right. Let's see. I think that might be it. 
Yep. Everybody's chatting up Holly. Um, awesome. Yeah, we'll call that a show. Thanks a lot, everyone. We will see you next week. And uh, sorry for the uh, show outage, but we're back. So uh, take care until then. Bye, everybody.